your main man Rick the Dawn and you know what we're here for we're here to look at some penny stocks I cannot wait to dive into this new uh, this new concept I think you will enjoy it for those who don't know I absolutely love investing It's one of my favorite things to do and it just so happens I only really invest in penny stocks so I figured that I would do something pretty cool and share what I do with everyone else by no means am I an expert <laughs> okay uh, do not take my advice absolutely run from my advice and uh, do not try this at home okay you've been warned uh, I am not a financial guru by any stretch of the imagination I am just having fun so by all means do not try this at home you've been warned all right we're gonna jump into some stuff here I'm going to go ahead and put on my thinking cap all right if you don't know this episode is brought to you by wordy.com and bluespace.com those are my companies i got a lot of companies okay and those are just a few of them check them out all right so here we go folks we're going to go ahead and jump in here and have some fun we're going to look at a brand new stock today um my good friend put a stock on my on my mind today and we're going to check out ghsi okay so i'm going to go through the entire process you know how this goes we got to do some research. We don't just jump into anything without doing some research. GHSI. Okay, this is a penny stock I've been looking at for quite some time. And let's see what we find. All right, here we go. GHSI right now is uh, selling for 16 cents per share. I like getting into penny stocks because it allows you to feel kind of you know rich. You know, when you buy these big giant companies or shares of these big giant companies you can't really flaunt a little you know can't flaunt um but when a stock is only trading for 16 cents per share i mean it's like you know it's, it's amazing um it's like taking a thousand bucks into a dollar store in fact it's like taking a thousand bucks into a a penny store you see what i'm saying so it gets it gets really interesting a lot of fun now obviously the biggest risk is uh, you know the possibility of losing money. All right, just as fast as you can, you can gain money, you can lose money. In fact, I'll be honest, I lose more money, or I've lost a lot of money over the years. I've gained a lot, but I've lost a lot, and that's because penny stocks can be very volatile. So here we go, folks. Um, GHSI. I've been a big fan of this particular company for some time, and what I like to do when I look at these stocks, just go through everything. Uh, I'm not sure how the big boys do it. This is how I do it, okay? Very first thing I like to do is just look at the profile and just get a basic understanding of what this company does. Uh, let's see here. What can we find? All right, so here we go. Um, let me see. Together with its subsidi subsidiaries, operates as a special health sciences company in the United States. It operates in two segments, medical foods and whatever that word is, and medical devices. The company offers whatever that word is. A medical food that replenishes and restores the macular protective pigment and glycosentine, whatever that is, a vision specific medical food. So it seems like GHSI, um, you know, delves into the medical sector. Only 13 employees. I look at everything. Um, I look at, you know, stocks as if I'm going on a, um, on a date. And, you know, when you're going on a date, like a blind date, you want to you want to find out everything. You you can't go in you know with any emotion. You have to be very very ruthless. If you see something that gives you pause, don't ignore it. That's how that's how that, that was my standard for data. If I see something, I'm going to check our social media. If I see anything that's off, I gotta I gotta run. And that's how I look at these stocks. So um, 13 employees. That means the company is not big, right? And just for the record, just in case you're not aware, of what I'll be doing, I'll be using my website blue space to keep notes and feel free to join blue space look you have to be a member in order to do what i'm doing on blue space but yeah it's there blue space is there i don't know why people don't use it i guess because i haven't done a good job of marketing it but blue space is online and you know you can go to blue space if you click on all categories um you'll see that quite a few of my rooms are already open uh not everything is open because I'm busy, so I don't have time to work on the site. This is a site I'm building, but uh, certainly a lot of, of a lot of the uh, the uh, pages are open. Okay, a lot of them are. And speaking of which, I will be using the members only room. And to become a member, all you have to do is go to bluespace.com and click. Uh, I think it's, it, it would say login register here. So you click register, 
and then from there you type in your information and I'll get a message and I'll invite you into the members room. All right, you only need a membership to join the members only blue room, but the other rooms you can just join them or just open them up and just have a way at it, you know, start talking to people. But the members only room is exclusive to people who uh, want to sign up. So uh, by all means, hey, you know, yeah. So I'm going to keep notes using my, my, my website, Blue Space, because I think it's a great resource that people don't even use, but maybe one day. So anyway, 13 employees for me. Let's let's start off like this. Let's do it this way. I'm going to start off by give, giving Blue Space an A, okay? And let's see how many things bring me that like what, how many things stick out as good or bad for me 13 employees certainly makes me a little nervous that that tells me that the company's pretty small and when you're dealing with a small company what could happen is that um they could be small forever you know what i mean like i like a company to grow or i like big companies even though they're penny stocks but anyway also something that's causing pause for me is the fact that it's in a sector that I'm not quite familiar with. Consumer staples don't even, you know, I don't really delve into that particular space. So obviously, this is causing a little pause for me because that means there's a lot about it I don't know. But let's keep going into the historical data. All right, this is one of my favorite places to look when it comes to penny stocks. And because look at this, you know, I, I love this part right here. This is one of my favorite parts. Um, this shows me data over the last 30 or so days. And here we go, folks. This is my, one of my favorite parts. So over the last 30 days or so, GHSI has peaked at 21 cents. And let's see what day that happened on. Let's see, where are you? 21 cents. We're looking for the high. I'm sorry. Here we go. So it peaked on October 6th, which means that it had some significant drops. As you can see, it went up 31% uh, on October 6th. And then it had three days of drops. See, this is what happened. So it peaked, and then everybody jumped in, and then the smart people sold, right? These three, these three days are smart people selling after everybody jumps in because if you jump into a stock as it's growing, uh, going up, then you're too late. You have to already be in the stock before it goes up. So when it does go up, you can sell and get off the ship. All right, so these three days is basically people seeing what's hot and just jumping in, and they lose money. That's what always happens. you got to be ahead of the curve not with the curve and then you can see here in these first uh or i should say the following three days it starts to you know pick up steam again i'm actually curious to see once it dropped for three days straight which is pretty big uh it went all the way down to 14 cents so that's pretty that, that was a great spot to get in in fact so 14 cents was good now uh the low is 13 cents so that's that's as low as the stock has gotten and if we look for the 13 cent low it looks like it might have been on the fifth so this is very interesting very interesting. Wait, that's 13 even. Let's do this. Let's slow down a little bit. 13 even is right here. So this actually happened on September 22nd. So if you would have got in on September 22nd, then, you know, come, let's see, come October 6th, that's when you sell because now for some reason, some news has come out and everything's pumping. So anyway, the point is uh, I use these, these numbers to figure it out. Now, here's something that's very important, the average. This tells me on average, what does the stock do in terms of numbers? And as you can see right now, it is above the average. For me, that's usually a sign not to get in because it's above the average. That means that there's there's space for it to drop. And that is more likely than it going up. Okay? And yeah. And then again, I'll go back to the high. The high is 21 cents. So yeah, that's that's not a big high for me. For me, I would have been more excited had I seen something like 59 cents or something like that. But I got to be careful here because maybe that day is coming and we are a little bit ahead of the curve. OK, so it's a lot of different a lot of factors you have to consider when you're doing this, this investing thing to beat the to beat the market takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. So this is what I do. You know what I mean? Um, I'm going to look at some financials. I do this from time to time. I'll be honest with you. I'm usually looking for mundane things, nothing too crazy, but I do like to look, you know what I mean? I do like to look. So here it is. This is some really important stuff for me. Uh, what I like to look at in, in particular is the return on investment. So it looks like individuals who invest in a stock usually lose about 24% of their money. That is not good. <laughs> that is not good. But when you're in penny stocks, you're going to see that more often than not. You're not going to see a lot of positives. It's very risky investing in penny stocks let's just, just let's get that out the way which is why i don't advocate 
advocate for it. I think you should just watch me do it and have, you know, but I, I don't know if I'm telling people to invest in penny stocks because it's really tricky. And I think it takes a lot of time to really get the hang of. Now, usually uh, P.E. ratios don't apply. Well, they do apply, but I, I never really see penny stocks with P.E. ratios. So I'm not expecting to see one now. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. P.E. ratio is 25. Hmm. Okay. Uh, usually 25 and lower is about what I'm looking for when it comes to a P.E. ratio. So that's not bad at all. All right. Um. I like to look at technical analysis, even though for penny stocks, it's always bad. It's always sell because smart, big, giant businessmen and women don't play around with penny stocks. They don't have time for it. They, they invest in tried and true companies. But if you know anything about like Warren Buffett, he always invested in, he had the last smoke strategy is what they called it. He invested in companies that had one more smoke left and, you know, he would put money into it. That, that company would go blow up. And then he has sale. So, you know, that is certainly a strategy that lends well to penny stocks. But again, a lot of the big boys don't even touch these things. Now, this is interesting. OK, I have to say I'm very surprised to see that GHSI is a strong buy. Did not see that as being a possibility uh, for a penny stock. You will find that over time as I do more of these that penny stocks usually don't have a strong buy. So this is actually news to me. All right. But that's only for our hourly training, uh, tr trading those for uh that's for people who do um, day trading and things of that nature. So, oh, it's even for five hours on a daily basis. Still a strong buy. Oh, OK. OK. So when you get to weekly trading, as you can see, the uh, technical analysis says sell. And then for monthly trading, more like what I like to do, swing trading, if you will, strong sell. So a lot of good things here. A lot of a lot of things to make you pause a little bit. But let's keep going. OK, let's keep going. The next thing I like to check is the stock split history now if you don't know what stock splits are i i hate stock splits they might be a good thing but that's basically when companies take the money from the investors or i'm sorry i, I don't know the technical terms here so uh there's going to be somebody who's going to be very irritated right now but go ahead be irritated it's okay uh create your own channel and say your own stuff but on my on my channel a stock split is uh when the company uh you know takes the st uh, the shares the share, you know, the shareholders shares and does something weird to them. All right. Uh, I feel like they saturate them or, or dilute them or stretch them out to make them more. It's almost like you take a, a uh, apple like that's one share and then you slice it in half and you create two apples. And for me, I hate when that happens because it's a uh, it's something that happens. And when it when it when it happens in penny stocks, the investors get completely terrified and they sell immediately so you usually lose a lot of money when stock splits happen so i try my best to avoid stock splits or companies that have a history of stock splits because they take your, your they take your beautiful share and they slice it and have and sometimes some companies will slice it into five pieces and what it does is it, it uh, dilutes your share and to me it just it, it it corrupts it a little bit now the good thing is it allows more people to invest in that company and, uh, you know, a lot of people might find stock splits and reverse splits a good thing. For me, I hate them because, yeah, they suck. They usually happen when a company has pressure on them to get their price above a dollar. And if, like I told you, we're, we're investing in penny stocks, which is basically any stock that's under five bucks, right? So if you're investing in penny stocks, especially the way I invest, I, I invest deep in the ocean of penny stocks. I'm down in the 10 cents to 16 cents where nobody goes this is insane right but if you're doing that you run a big risk of the you know the trading coalition removing that that company because they're not above a dollar you have to be above a dollar to be in good standing and the companies that i'm investing in are not usually above a dollar they, matter of fact they're always below a dollar okay because i'm cheap so that's what it is and you're trying to at least if you're playing the game i'm playing you're trying to avoid reverse splits and stock splits you're trying to find a company that can hold its own and get above a dollar without doing any trickery that's what we're doing but uh what i like to do is look at the history of a company and stock split history that gives me an indication if i get into this this company will they end up diluting in and taking money from the investors and doing something weird you know a lot of stuff happens now here we go this let's see what happens when you type in ghsi okay here we go folks um i did something weird here so let me go back and try it again i was moving a little fast on that one all right here we go 
So it looks like GHSI has had one split, and that took place in 2021. I actually remember that stock split. And as you can see, uh, they did a one for six reverse split. That means they took that one apple and cut it into six pieces. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Um, I, I don't think I was in GHSI when that happened, but I didn't. I don't like it just to see it. But only one stock split. You know, one stock split over the entire company's history is not a terrible thing, if I can be honest. I'm actually okay with that. And that doesn't give me any pause. But let's go back to blue space, uh, blue space for just a moment. And let's see. We got a lot of different factors. We had the fact that they have, you know, um, you know, 13 employees. There was a strong buy for hourly and five hourly training, trading, even weekly. Uh, no, I'm sorry, daily trading. So it's a good day trading stock, apparently. Um, but it was pretty bad in terms of weekly and monthly. Uh, what else? It's a, sec a sector I'm not quite familiar with. They had one stock split. These are all things that <sighs> come with trading penny stocks. For so for me, I'm going to uh, detract from this just a little bit and say right now I'm at about a B for GHSI. All right, you know when I when I weigh the goods and the bads, I'm at about a B right now. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's see what we find. Uh, this is another great uh, what do you call it? Another great resource. Finviz. I use it from time to time. And what it allows you to do is see the news and how the news impacted the uh, uh, company price or the the, uh, the, um, the share price, okay? So I know a lot of people look at the candlestick wax and all that stuff. I don't because I don't understand it, okay? I just invest the way I invest, and sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm bad. But here we go. Uh, we can see that on October 6th, they had a super increase, and we saw that on that other uh, investing.com, we did see that big jump that took place when we looked at the historical analysis. And um, where would I find that general and historical data? Yeah, so we saw that big jump and we can actually look at Finviz to figure out what news took place or what happened in, in the news world that made that jump happen. Here is that big jump again. If we go back to October 6th, here it is. It jumped all the way up to 18, but the high was 21, which is insane. All right. But it, anyway, if we go to Finviz, we can see that on that day, we got some news. Guardian Health Sciences announces clinical results indicating that uh, whatever that company's name is, Omega Boost Gel Bites increase. OK, so something happened. All right. Something big happened and it caused a lot of investors to get, you know, really jittery and happy. And this is what a lot of companies do. They'll release some news. Uh, release their earnings to show that their company is just fine, even though it's trading under a dollar. And a lot of investors will get very, very giddy and excited. But we can also go a little further. Look at this. We had a 45% drop, uh, drop on February 18th when they announced a public offering. Now, I like pub public offerings. Um, I know a lot of people don't, and they usually panic when that happens. But I love public offerings because they're not reverse splits. I love anything but a reverse split when it comes to penny stocks. So public offerings for me, I forget what they are because I haven't invested in some time. But for the most part, if my memory serves me, public offerings are basically indications to investors that uh, you know the company basically comes clean about what they think their what their company is worth. So public offerings usually scare investors if. The uh, public offering or the price is much lower than what the, the price is trading at. For example, if you were to go to um, Walmart and buy an apple for five dollars, and then the company who made that apple said, "Hey, uh, it's time for public offering. Here it is. Uh, we're offering this apple to these people over here, not our not our investors, the people who bought the apple already for five bucks." We're actually offering it to these people over here for a dollar. And that makes the people who have the apple for five dollars panic and say, wait a minute, why do I have this five dollar apple if it only costs a buck? They are they instantly realize they might lose some money. So uh, public offerings usually make people panic. For me, I'll have that apple for five dollars. And once I hear that it's, it's uh, trading for a dollar over here, I'll go buy it over here, too. And I'll just have both apples and I'll average it out. So whatever, uh, that's what, three, three dollars. So the average between one uh, apple that costs five and an apple that costs a dollar, three bucks, whatever. You know, more, more for me, I'll sell them both for six and make a profit. So public offerings don't scare me, but they definitely scare investors. So that's why you can see these huge drops. As you can see, actually, this is almost an 80, 80% 80 drop over two days. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's pretty bad. Um, I'm gonna do something that I want to show. Uh, I want to show on camera. Sometimes I'll go way back. I'll go as far as I can. I'll go back to the beginning of the year just to see how the company has been doing over the entire year. 
Now, this is something that I do. I don't know. I'm not sure everyone else does it, but I certainly do it. And it gives me a bigger picture. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful, right? Uh, now, we go all the way down to the bottom, and we can find out that the high was 74 cents. The low was 13, as we saw. And the average over the year was 23 cents. So for me, that's another negative. So it peaked all the way at 74 and then dropped down at 13. So I got to figure out where was it trading at 74 cents. Let's do some research here, okay? So let's figure out where, here it is. It was trading at 74 cents on, on January and today is at 16. So it's not, I would say the company is not doing a good job with sustaining uh, it's not doing a good job of sustaining the the average price, which means this stock is very volatile. And for me, for right now, things could change. But I'm going to go and drop this down to about a C. Uh, a C. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Uh, you know, you're trading at 74 cents. Let's say you bought in at 74 cents in January. Right now, you're just you're 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 just losing it. And if this company were to do a reverse flip, man, that would be absolutely terrible. So. I'm going to say right now this stock is at about a C for me because it's not doing the company's not doing a good job. It's sustaining the average price. OK, so anyway, let's keep going. I'm at a C right now. Uh, OK, so we got OK, so let's move on to the next thing. Stock Twitch. Stock Twitch is one of the most honest place places you can go when it comes to investing because the platform allows investors in a company to talk freely. It's just like it's almost like Blue Space, except Blue Space is like the best company or um, you know conversation platform on the planet. However, okay, however, Stock Twitch is amazing because it focuses on stocks. It has a singular focus, whereas Blue Space focuses on everything. Okay, but anyway, the point is it allows investors to chat, and what I like to do is peek in on those conversations just to see what exactly is the mood and tempo, and how how are people feeling. Uh, who have you know money invested in a certain company? So if we type in GHSI, let's go here and take a look and see what investors in that company are saying about the stock. Okay, here we go. All right, so the finale will arrive shortly, my brothers. I think that this stock will go up to forty or fifty cents per share. Yeah, not happening. Not happening. Not from sixteen. Okay. All right. All right here comes Santa Claus. So this person's very optimistic. It'll run. That means it'll do well. Uh, this person is using candlestick graphs, so let's see what happens with there. They said anything is possible. Of course it is. I mean, that's not even uh, news. Okay, she is going to go wild. So as you can see, the mood is very bullish, which means positive, happy, giddy. Uh, it's very positive here for GHSI. I've seen a lot of companies where they're just like angry at the company, the company owners. They suck. They're not doing a good job. So the fact that they're in good spirits, and they seem to be very optimistic. That is a good sign. That means that the people who have money in this company, they feel positive about the uh, the future of the company. So that's something I feel positive about. With that being said, I am prepared to go up to about a C plus because people in this company seem to be pretty, you know, pretty excited, right? Um, so yeah, still a clueless clown. I see. Um, Shorts panicking. Shorts are people who bet against the stock. So this person thinks that people who are betting against the stock are panicking. I'm not sure if that's true, though. OK, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, they might be very, very uh, excited and happy. And, you know, but anyway, it's time to go to one of my favorite uh, websites, which I think is probably one of the most one of the most important because it gives you information that you just can't deny. This is more of a uh, professional, um, you know, I would like to say it's like the uh, authority. One of those type of websites. So if I type in GHSI, uh, let's see what happens here. So one thing we try to avoid, at least that I try to avoid, is reverse splits. I hate stock splits. And one thing I hate more than stock splits, if you can believe it, is delistings. A delisting uh, is when a company is removed from the stock exchange, which means you're going over the counter where... <laughs> It's like the wild, wild west. Nobody wants to own shares of a company that's over the counter or trading over the counter. That's... That's like investing hell, okay? You don't want to be there. If your company gets delisted because it, that it hasn't satisfied that $1 minimum that stock exchanges, most of them require, then it goes to over the counter. Trust me, I have a few companies I'm invested in that are now trading over the counter, and it is absolutely terrible. It's like going bankrupt in your investing por portfolio. You don't want, want that to happen. So one thing you want to do is you want to do as much research as possible as we're doing. And this is certainly a great resource because if you click on filings, 
what will happen is they will tell you if this company has been contacted by the stock exchange and say hey, and been given a warning. OK, because uh, the stock exchange, if a company is trading under a dollar, they'll give them a warning and say, hey, you got six months to get this this uh, this price above a dollar. If not, you may be dis delisted. So what I like to do is before I even touch a company, I like to go and take a look at their filings and see if the stock exchange had anything to say to GHSI that I need to be aware of. OK, so it's, let's let's do some looking here. Let's do some uh, poking around. Uh, here it is, folks. Here is that terrible, terrible thing. Notice of the listing or failure to satisfy a continued listing. This happened in January. Usually a company will be delisted about six to seven months after um, a notice from the stock exchange. So if we click on that, we can find out, we can see the actual document and, you know, gather some information. Here it is, folks. Uh, 180 calendar days, which is roughly six months, okay? And as you can see, uh, it even gives you the date in which they must regain uh, re regain compliance. And that have they must have gained compliance by July 25th. Now, what is confusing for me is July 25th has passed, and this company is still on the uh, stock exchange. Which means, at any point, this this company could receive terrible news in which it is being delisted. Which is why, <laughs> at this particular point, right now, GHSI is definitely a D, okay, because it is well past the time given by the stock exchange to get their price above a dollar, and they're not even close, okay? If this stock was trading at 74 cents, maybe I would consider jumping in. And that's not to say it can't. There, there's been crazy things that have happened which allow stocks to just go crazy uh, out of nowhere, right? But, you know, me being the cautious investor that I am, and I, I say that very loosely because I've made some crazy and bonehead decisions, but certainly that doesn't fare well for me. That means that this company at any point could have bad news. You wake up one morning and you see a stock split because now the company's trying to dilute your, your shares and force their price from 16 to a dollar 16 just to satisfy the uh, the the, um, the requirement from the stock exchange that could happen or you can wake up and find out that your company is trading over the counter so both of those scenarios are absolute no-nos for me and as a result I have to run for the mountains I am not afraid to hightail it okay I have other um, other you know uh, resources that I utilize to help me figure out if a company is pretty good here's one of them right here as you can see together with the subsidiaries operates okay this is more like a pros and cons type of website uh, revenue is forecast to grow 17 point that's that's in the that's an opinion in my in my opinion okay that's more of an opinion not a fact all right currently unprofitable all right volatile share does not have meaningful meaning meaningful market cap so that means the company right now uh, has a market cap of about of about ten million dollars, which I said was a little bit suspicious for me because they had thirteen employees. These are all reasons why, for me, GHSI is not looking so well. Now I will invest in actual companies. I won't show you my investing portfolio because for me that's private. But I will say I will let you know if I'm going to invest in something, um, just so you know, you know, okay. But because this stock right now is, in my opinion, a D, I have to say, not at all. That's a big no for me. I cannot invest in GHS side because of the things I've noted. Now, there's a lot of things you can look that I ha look at I haven't looked at, but these are the quick ways I can see if further analysis is necessary. Okay, sometimes it's not necessary. It's like okay, I see enough. I'm I'm a I'm a pass. Now that does not mean that GHS I could have some huge miraculous spike. I've seen it before and jump up to six dollars or something crazy like that. I've seen that before, but I'm not going to uh, chance it. You know, I'll, I'll let the people who have those kind of guts go ahead and take that risk. I'm going to bow out because I don't need the money that bad. Okay. All right, here it is, folks. Thank you all for watching GHSI. If you enjoyed this. Uh, you you got to like the video. If you don't like the video, I'm not going to do these anymore, okay? Uh, this is a lot of time. I, I, I'd rather do this on my own. If you feel like this has been helpful at all, like the video, and that will give me the encouragement, the gas to keep keep doing this. Uh, certainly, if you're someone who's trying to learn stocks, I'm, I'm right here. I got, I got the time. But I need some encouragement. I need some likes. I need some shares. I need all that cool stuff, some subscriptions. If you do that, I promise to keep these things rocking. Thank you for sharing some time with your main man, Rick the Dawn, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.